Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. <clears throat> We're going to talk about today how to cross people over. Um, thanks so much for coming up with these great ideas. I get excited about talking about them. So I wanted to prep a little bit um, this conversation with um, what, well, what, what happens. Like, why do some people get stuck and need help crossing over in the first place? So let's talk a little bit about what even a ghost is. So, um, you know, ghosts are the spirits of people who died but haven't crossed over into the higher spiritual realm. And they're kind of stuck in this plane. Um, and what happens when we die is like um, the there's sort of two parts of ourselves, right? There's the, um, or there's two deaths that we have to go. We have to, our physical body dies. When our physical body dies, our spiritual essence is released. Um, some people call it the astral self. Some people call it the etheric self. It has a bunch of different names to it. But um, then that pops out of the body. And that part then has to die what's called the second death. The first death is the death of the body. The second death is when the spirit actually crosses over. And it, um, it has to kind of release this plane that we live, this earth plane that we live in, and literally rise up. Kind of actually goes sideways over into the astral, into a part of the astral called the shadow lands, and then it goes up. Some people go straight up. They don't, they miss the sideways. That they're really just at peace with dying, you know? Um, and they just go. So, you know, ghosts are different from um, your ancestor guides or, or uh, people that have fully crossed over. So sometimes we have visitations from people who are in, in heaven or in soul world and they come and visit us. That's more like a guide or a visitation. And that's different from connecting with the spirit of somebody who's at peace is different from this a ghost. A ghost is the uneasy dead. They're restless, unhappy. They often need help. Um, the easy dead, you're this, the people who have really crossed over, they're fine. They, and they're, they're residing in, in soul world, um, or you can call it heaven, you can call it soul world, whatever you want. They don't, they don't need our help. But the uneasy dead really sometimes do. And, you know, psychics who, there are certain psychics who specialize in speaking to the dead that we call those psychics mediums. But Every psychic, as far as I know, gets called on once in a while to cross somebody over or to, maybe you're a Reiki practitioner and you're you're working on somebody and their dead granny shows up with a message. They may be like the easy dead, kind of like a benevolent spirit guide who's showing up. Um, but sometimes we're around places where these ghosts or the uneasy dead are, are um, around and they might be drawn to you because you're psychic. Um, they might come around, you know, because they need help. Um, and a lot of times those psychics sort of light up the astral plane. The uneasy dead are stuck in the astral plane in a part of the astral plane called the Shadowlands. And they're they're freaked out sometimes, they need help, and they see us light up the astral plane like little light bulbs, especially when we're, hi everybody, especially when we're, um, we're sleeping, we're meditating. Um, I can tell you for sure that that psychics that have underlying um, mediumship ability, and especially the if you have mediumship ability, you haven't trained it, you're going to be like a ghost magnet. Um, and I was definitely a ghost magnet for a lot of my life. So I would move into a house. I could move into a brand new house, and that place would be haunted like two weeks after I moved in. Um, um, it's like Murphy's Law. Like put me in when I go travel. They put me in the there could be 800 hotel rooms in this hotel. They put me in the one that has a ghost in it <laughs> or every ghost comes around, you know, when I show up. So, um, so I've had to learn. It's a practical skill that we sometimes need to cross people over. So it's, it's important to understand that there's a big difference between a ghost and a spirit guide. A spirit guide is helpful, friendly, wise spirits. Ghosts are the lost and stuck spirits of the uneasy dead. They don't give good advice. We don't want to ask them for help. They're messed up. They're in trouble. And this is sometimes what makes seances, Ouija boards, things like this tricky. Okay. Why do some people get stuck? Um, and it boils down to the natural process of death being interrupted or postponed in some way or trauma. So the number one reason why they don't, they don't they miss their window and they don't cross is trauma 
Trauma is like the unresolved, unhealed emotions from violent events. This creates a block in our energy field. And trauma happens to living people too, right? But so a traumatic death, murder, suicide, you died in battle, sudden violent accidental death can create a huge trauma that needs to be cleaned up before the spirit of the deceased can rest. Sometimes tra it's trauma that happened in life that they can't square, you know? They can make an uneasy spirit um, abuse, neglect, violence, war, all these kinds of things can create. So trauma, if you think about the spirit that's leaving like, like a little hot air balloon with a basket on it, right? Um, trauma is heavy and it creates like a uh, weight that doesn't allow people to like literally lift their frequency off the planet. And sometimes with trauma, there's a feeling of unfinished business. Um, like an incompletion that that need that something that needs to be solved or resolved before the person can like let go of the earth plane. The other thing that holds spirits here is attachment, um, and this is why sometimes ghosts are are depicted as being bound by chains. Chains are the heaviness of emotion or relationships or situations or obligations that keep them earthbound, and they can be like. Um, you know, the person, it can be a living person who's holding on to that spirit and not allowing, this is attachment, like a child who doesn't want to leave the mother that's passing or conversely, the mother doesn't want to let the child who's passing go, you know, that so that a kind of attachment, it's like the cords we form sometimes like you, you don't leave me can, you know, that's why when somebody's dying and they're struggling a little bit, it's kind of kind to say you can go. Like we give them, I'll be, I'm going to be okay. Like you can go, you know, that kind of breaks the attachment. And, and a lot of times um, people that are dying or struggling with attachment, I mean, we are really attached to our loved ones, right? It's nothing wrong with that. Um, a lot of times when people are dying, it's, have you ever heard the stories where they wait until everyone leaves the room and then they go <laughs> because the presence of the loved ones there can create an attachment that doesn't, they don't want to go. Right. And sometimes the attachment is like the, the 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 soldier who won't leave their post or the person feels like they have a mission um, that they can't um, let go of. You know, um, like right after 9-11 happened, I worked with a bunch of psychics who went to New York City to help the spirits of, of the people who, who died there, which was kind of like a big um perfect storm of all these things I'm talking about. There's a lot of trauma, a lot of sudden violent death, a lot of people who didn't know they were dead because their death was so quick. Um, that's a lot of times something that happens there. And and I worked with some uh, firefighters who were having trouble crossing over at the time because they they're, were so dedicated to their mission. I'm, I'm not going until we get everyone out of the building, you know, like that. They, they couldn't let go of that. It was so ingrained in there. We re and they needed a lot of work, like a, a lot of um, process. We really had a lot of healing before they could realize what had happened to them and get the scope of the, everything that happened and realize that they were dead and, and that they could let go. So a trauma and attachment are a big part of why ghosts form. Um, the other thing is having your free will taken away because a lot of times our point of death is sort of like, a personal decision between us and God. Um, we it could be in your it could be written on your in your contract when you're going to die, and that and sometimes that changes like accidents or murder. Um, when that choice about our point of death is taken away from us, people can get stuck as ghosts. And ironically, life saving or life prolonging equipment in hospitals do this all the time. It's happened a lot with COVID. So I've seen a lot of very uneasy spirits in hospitals um, because COVID, they put you on a ventilator. And what happens is your body, if your body dies, but the machines are still breathing for you or keeping you alive, you kind of miss your window. Like, um, it's like missing your exit off the highway or miss your, <laughs> missing the train you were supposed to get on that, that opening to the other side um, crosses. But, and this separation has happened so the spiritual essence, the etheric um, body separates from the physical body but can't leave because the physical body is still technically alive. Um, and so hospitals, in my mind, are always full of uh, the uneasy dead because of these things. 
uh, because they died traumatically, they died of a gunshot wound, they, they were hooked up to machi machinery. And if I was queen of the world, I would post shamans and mediums in every hospital to help um, cross over the dead constantly it needs to happen. And I've just seen a lot of, it's really sad. I've seen a lot of ghosts on Easy Dead people who died in COVID, they died alone, they were confused, they didn't know, it's like, it's not a good situation. It's, it's, there are definitely some spirits that need help with that. Okay, so, um, you know, sometimes hauntings aren't ghosts. Ghosts, I wouldn't say they're totally rare. Uh, my friend David says they are, um, and he says that most of the ghosts he deals with, he specializes in house clearings. David Franklin Farkas, he's incredible with house clearings and space clearings. He has a website called househealing.com if you want to check him out. Um, and he says most of the ghosts he clears are people that don't know they're dead. And if you've ever seen the movie The Sixth Sense, you've, that's a fantastic movie. It um, explains a lot about what happens when people die and why they get stuck, right? You'll see everything I talked about actually in that movie. Um, so Marty, you say, can someone be attached to us when we die and, and prevent us from crossing over, even if we're not personally attached? I think it, that kind of attachment is sort of a two-way thing. I think if you're really determined to go, honey, and you go, you're, and it's your time comes, you're going to go. It's kind of like a, a mutual, like, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave you either. Like that kind of mutuality. I, I haven't seen a case where someone in the living um, totally prevents a person who wants to go, go, except in black magic, which we don't have time to talk about that <laughs> um, in, this, in this particular thing, but a really super strong magic, black magic practitioner could prevent you from going. That's really, really bad mojo and would be incredibly rare. So I wouldn't worry about it too much at the moment. Okay. Um, so what do we do? What do we do about it when we encounter um, something like this? And first of all, how do we know? How do we know if there's a ghost around us? Um, and if you're sort of psychically inclined, I think we, we and sensitive, it's hard to miss it. So many people are, have a really strong physical reaction in the presence of a true uneasy dead. So for me, I feel cold. I feel slightly nauseated. I feel a vertigo feeling. Um, I walked into an old country inn not too long ago, and um, I, I was walking down the hallway from the restaurant to the ladies' room. Super old. It was like late seven, say 1790 or something like that. And I was walking down this hallway, and all of a sudden I got that like tummy flip, um, vertigo. Like I think I actually stumbled and staggered a little bit. I get that feeling of, of coldness. Um, like somebody threw a bucket of cold slimy water on me, the hair stands up on the back of my neck. Um, and and I, I feel it's, a, I get sort of a metallic taste in my mouth, kind of like blood. Um, it's it's a very strong reaction that I can't miss. And I always know when that happens that there's a spirit of, of a ghost around when that happens. But you might have a different reaction. So you, you could feel something like a cold spot. People will say there's cold spots in their house. <laughs> if you've got one in your environment, um, you're going to have the feeling probably of being watched or a feeling of a presence around you. <clears throat> they often they often want to connect our uh, uh, collect our attention, right? So you might have um, smells are really common: cigarette smokes, perfume, um, cigar smoke. Like they're going to let you know they're there. Sounds too: footsteps, um, knocking on walls, kind of doors opening. Um, they're they're often trying to connect our attention. So things moving around, like keys lost and found, papers moving around, they can manipulate electric electrical things fairly easily. So lights and radio, TVs turn on and off. Um, you maybe you have a room no one goes into, that kind of thing. And there's a, there's a lot of times some sort of symbology in how they communicate with us. So for example, if they um, if they uh, want you to find or look for something, they might hide something. Um, they, that's a common, um, you know, they're often trying to catch our attention. And that cold spots happen because they, they literally will steal, it's kind of a little creepy, I guess. They'll literally um, 
steal our life force energy long enough to manifest. So they might have, that's why you feel cold and they will take enough of your energy so that they can make something move or appear or manifest in some way. Um, they cannot, they can manifest in electrical storms, which is like why it's sort of like a dark, why it's always a dark and stormy night <laughs> where the lightning strikes and there's a ghost, you know, um, because they need that sort of ambient electricity to kind of create a manifestation of themselves, right? Um, I mean, they show up on pictures sometimes, so it's really good to look at your pictures. Uh, I was one time doing one of these videos, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking at myself on the video, and I can see behind me. It was, it was so weird, like a big streaky orb passed behind me on the video. And this is why people use like EVPs, tape recorders, cameras will often um, capture. Uh, uh, a spirit when we can't see them with our naked eye, right? And if you're an empath, you're gonna probably feel the presence of spirits. Um, and, and they will communicate, if you're an empath, you're, they're gonna communicate with us through, this is how a lot of times it happens to me. So if they get near you and they wanna talk to you, they may kind of throw an emotion at you. Um, and I think like if they were scared, they might be like, oh my God, I, I'm, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm lost, I'm stuck, I don't know what's happening here. This is how I feel, <sighs> right? And they kind of, they throw that emotion at you. And so you feel, sometimes the fear you feel isn't yours. It's they're trying to communicate by showing, telling us how we feel, they feel. Um, now, when I was little, I would see them all the time. I'd wake up and there'd be people standing around my bed. And I mean, I didn't know anything. I grew up in a pretty haunted house. And like I said, Murphy's Law, put the psychic child in the haunted bedroom and I'd wake up and there'd be, they'd be all around. And um, the uneasy ones, sometimes they were fine. They were just curious. Most of them, most of the spirits of the dead you see are curious. They're showing up because you're lighting up the astral plane and they're just like, Oh, look at her. She's beautiful. Look at him. Look at them. They're look at that person there. Woo. Look at that bright, pretty light. What's going on over there? You know, sometimes they come because they need help. And the ones that are stuck come in what's called the death state. I used to call it their dead face when I was little. So they, they look all corpsey and freaky because they're stuck in their state of death. And it's a little bit like, oh my God, look at what, look at what happened to me. I was driving by a funeral home maybe 10 or 15 years ago. And this dead lady jumped into my car and sat in the passenger seat of my car. She looked messed up. I think she died in a car accident. It wasn't pretty. And she, she died unexpectedly. She died out of her time. It wasn't her time to go. And she was like, oh, my God, look at me. Like, look at what happened to me. And I had to pull over. And I did what's called the witnessing. This is one of the ways that we crossed them over. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, honey. Like, what did happen? Like, tell me about it. I always say like clearing ghosts is like, it's like therapy, but they don't pay your office. They don't pay your fee and they don't keep your office hours. <laughs> right. But it's a lot of ghost clearing. The way that I do it is like therapy. I'm like, what happened? Tell me everything, you know? And I, I just knew she wasn't leaving my car until I heard I was driving home. Maybe I had a few two martinis. It was raining out. And the next thing I know I'm in a funeral home, like my funeral. She was like freaked. And I was like, okay, like I let her tell me everything and she's like, I miss my kids. I miss my husband. And I, she was like, kept trying to get back in her body, which she couldn't do. Um, and, and she was so sad, you know, and I just was sort of like uh, listening, you know, and understanding like, and eventually um, she sort of rolled out her whole, her whole experience. And I was like, you know what happened, right? You get it now, right? You're, you died. That's your, your funeral. She was like, shit, I can't believe I died. I had so much to do. Like she had all these feelings about it. And then, and then she was like, I better get back. I want to see who comes to my funeral. <laughs> and she, and she booted, you know, um, back into the funeral. I don't know what happened to her because I never saw her again after that. Um, but that, that's what we can choose to do depending on how much access we have to our psychic gifts. Um, I would, I just want to also tell you that it's extremely rare that a ghost can hurt you. We see a lot in movies, try not to freak out about it too much. Um, really occasionally I hear a story where, where somebody gets really hurt. Um, but that's very rare. It's, it's nothing really to be afraid of. I don't think 
any more than you're afraid of any person that was traumatized, you know? Yeah, they don't look so good. Um, I don't know. Dead people never scared me, actually, even when I was little, even when they came in the death state. Living people scared the, the crap out of me on a pretty regular basis, but dead people, it's, it's just people. They're just people. They just need help in the moment. Um, so don't be afraid. They really, really can't can't hurt you, super rare that that would happen. Um, they don't have physical form. Their materializing is really hard for them. We're strong in this dimension and they're really not, okay? Now, if you want if you want to go the like ghost hunting, like, like I love paranormal TV shows and um, ghost hunting stuff, that's kind of cool. Um, just be careful um, doing that. There, there are a lot of ghost hunters who, the ones that we see on TV and some of the paranormal groups around here, um, if you're going to work with them, make sure that they give you really good training. And, and please make sure that you're working with a group that is dedicated to helping the spirits, not just cataloging them. Um, because sometimes what happens is you get a homeowner who thinks they have a ghost. And the team comes over and the team is really interested in capturing evidence of the ghost and has no clue about how to actually help in the situation. They don't know or care about how to cross the spirit over. They're not really gonna help the person. And a lot of times the things that they do are like kicking the hornet's nest and then leaving. And I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the point in my mind. Um, what the point would be would be to help. So if you're gonna do that kind of thing, first of all, it's a very dangerous We'll talk about it sometime on one of these, but it's it's a dangerous psychic activity. Um, I used to do it. I did it for 10 years and I did I back in the 90s when nobody was talking about it or the, there's no paranormal shows, no ghost hunter TV. I, we were just thrashing it away and, fig, you know, thrashing through it and figuring it out the hard way. And I made every mistake. I got really sick. I got very physically ill. I brought spirits home with me. I got, I had entities and shadow spirits up the wazoo that took me years to sort out the mess of that. So unless, um, unless you're up for that, <laughs> you're, you're walking into the most difficult situation. It's like, it would be like you, you want, you, you want to figure out what's going on. So you go to the front line of the war. Okay. That's what you're doing. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying do it eyes wide open to make sure you have very, very, very good training and backup and support and never do it alone. Okay. It's dangerous. Um, so what do we do? Here's how we actually do it. Um, what, if you're sure that you have a ghost, um, and it can be many other things besides a ghost, which again, we'll talk about it another time. But the, if you know, you have one that a stuck dead person, there's, I always try being polite first. There's a few things you can do. Remember to ask them ni nicely to move along. Let's say you're sleeping in your bed and somebody, an actual person stomps into your room in the middle of the night. Um, you don't like pull out a shotgun and shoot them. Hopefully, you know, you might be like, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> like, let's start with asking them to leave. They're, they're lost, they're confused. And they can be quite apologetic about being a nuisance. Most people, the spirits of the uneasy dead are a lot like their personalities were when they were alive. And most of them are very nice people. They're just lost and stuck and confused. If you were an asshole in life, you might be an asshole ghost. That's true. But we, we want to kind of err on the side of helping. Like, okay, are you okay? <laughs> Do you know that you're dead? Is sort of the first thing. Did you know that you died? Like, let me... I just want to tell you, like, can you sit down? Let me talk to you nicely. Let me hold your hand while I tell you this. You died. You, know, you get that, right? And a lot of times that's enough. Like, we'll help them cross over. If, if that doesn't help, then you can demand. You get a little foot stompy. Insist. Point your finger and use your bad dog voice. I demand that you leave, right? Um, and then you can actually command. And we do this in the name, and we call on a higher power, in the name of deity of your choice, I demand that you leave. This is the kind of spiritual version of calling the cops, right? And a lot of times that will work. Um, and that's kind of, that's kind of like your go-to. If you are a medium or you're, you have the training to actually speak to them, you can also speak them through a pendulum. Please do not use a Ouija board, um, but you can use a, you know, yes or no kind of um, with pendulums. Um, 
then you you can do the witnessing. And to do the witnessing, you really have to be more trained than we can talk about here um, to perceive what's going on with them. And that's when we allow the ghost to tell their story. They And that's what I did with a lady who jumped into my car. I did a witnessing. Tell me all about it. Like, what happened to you? Like, give me give me the download here. Um, and, and a lot of times, so when I do clearing Sue, I'm going to call on a higher power to help me. Um, and if you've ever seen the TV show Ghost Whisperer, especially the first few seasons, that's very accurate. And that TV was a uh, show was the um, spiritual consultant they used was James Van Prague, who is an excellent medium, one of the very, very, very best. In fact, he has a fantastic online training program. If you want to learn to do mediumship online, he's got a great program there. Um, and so what I do is I, I call on Archangel Azrael, the angel of death. He's one of my guides. You can call on, again, deity of your Archangel Michael, Jesus, Buddha, Kuan Yin, whoever you work with, to open a gate between you and the other side. Um, I do this, like, for example, when I go to ho I go to hospitals. My dad was real sick for a long time. He was in the hospital. Um, <clears throat> and he, um, you know, I'd go to the hospital. He was at Brigham and Women's in Boston, like, in intensive care and on one of the floors. And he was there during COVID. And I, I would go there and all the dead people would come out and I would be like, all right, community service here. I'm going to, I'm going to open a, they're lost, they're stuck. So I would ask Archangel Michael and, and Azrael and Jesus and whoever else was there to open a portal. And it really does look to me like a big beam of light that comes down. Um, and I would say, here it is, here's the opening. And so many of them would just leave. They'd be like, thank you for showing me the way out. And they, I just would feel them like whoosh, 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 flowing up there. Um, and sometimes they get, they're really hesitant to go. Um, sometimes it's because they don't, haven't released their trauma or their attachments. Sometimes it's because there's a lot of fear. Um, and they fear if you've been told your whole life that if you were a bad, naughty person and you cross over, you're going to hell. Those poor Catholics, make, they get stuck a lot because they're like, I, I was naughty. Like I, I sinned and I don't want to go to hell. And I didn't receive my last rites. You know, um, and and I'll be like, look, you know, you're not going to hell. I've never actually seen hell. I've never seen that. I've seen like spirit demon world, but there's no people down there. Um, you know, God's forgiving. Like you're forgiven. You're already forgiven. And, and just telling people that that like they're not going to get stuck or trapped in hell that allows them sometimes to cross over. Or I'll, I'll say, like, look, like your family, they're in the light. Look in the light. Can you see your mother? Can you see your grandmother who's in there that you know? Right. And they'll be like, oh, my God, it's my mother. I'm going, you know, um, we can't make a ghost cross. I always say there's nothing more stu stubborn than a stuck dead person that doesn't want to go. They just really dig in their heels. And that's where you call a professional. Right. That's a good time um, to. You can have your house blessed by a priest or a religious person, clergy of whatever your faith might be. Um, that's a good way to kind of move them on, uh, along. If you need more help than, than, than what we talked about here, you're going to call a feng shui practitioner or a shaman or a person who specializes in moving on the dead. Um, and there can be a combination of psychic and medium abilities to help unwanted spirits move on. There are times we just have to call in a professional to do it. Um, so again, that's kind of our triage thing. Like, don't panic. Ask them to leave politely at first. Tell them to go away. Like, if you don't want them bothering your sleep, set a boundary. I'm trying to sleep, dude. Like, I'll talk to you in the morning, right? Part of my deal is I have office hours. So, and I'm really strict about it. I don't want spirits bothering me in the middle of the night. I need to sleep. I've got my own life, you know? So I'm like, I have office hours. And that's when, um, that, where, where I'll deal with them. Um, you can then use the bad dog voice, ask that they leave, really demand that they leave, then command in the name of Jesus, Archangel Michael, Buddha, Allah, I demand that you leave. Help them cross over through prayer. Bring in your whatever who your prayer things are and, and pray for them. It works. So often that works. Um, and then um, if that doesn't work, you can also try bringing in the um, the light and see if that works too. It's going to be better for you if you have some ability to communicate with them. 
um, which we talk about in my psychic development class, by the way. So I know these little things that I do in here um, spark a lot of questions. I'm giving you a bite size here if you want the whole the whole enchilada. All of this is in my psychic development class, Mastering Your Psychic Ability. Okay, so someone asked, can you define entities versus stuck dead people? Entities are non-human, so that's the first definition. Stuck dead people are people. Um, entities, for the most part, and they're around, they come around a lot. Um, they just act in a different way. Um, and they, they're usually parasitic. They're usually from the lower astral realm. Um, and their goal is to, I don't know, they, they use our life force energy to exist on. Um, sometimes they get on us, sometimes they live in our spaces and they they tend to um, be around um, play, people who have a lot of trauma. They like people that have a weak energy field and a lot of pain and trauma on the inside of them. Um, and that's when entity, that's the kind of people that are, that enter, entities are attracted to. Sometimes environments where bad things happen. We talked about portals in the last video that we did can create entities. Sometimes it's hard to know um, without a pendulum or without the sight, without being, I can see them. So there is a psychic skill called discernment and discernment is the ability to tell what kind of spirit you're dealing with. Um, you know, <clears throat> that spirit, that it's a hard skill to learn. I do teach that skill in my psychic development class. So if you take my whole three months program, you're gonna have really good discernment at the end of it. Um, but you can also use a pendulum to tell the difference. Like you get your pendulum out and do like, is it a is it human or non-human? Is there a spirit here? Yes or no? Human or non-human? It's kind of what I want to know, right? Like, and then uh, what do you, what do we do to move it on? Now, uh, the spirits of the dead are going to do kind of human -y things. So they flicker the lights. They they might take your keys. If something is happening that's bigger than that, like if you're if your pen rolls on your desk, it's probably a human. If your fridge moves across your room, you've got a big problem. So spirits of the dead can can move objects under two pounds. But if like furniture is flying around or things are levitating or, you, you know, you come home and all your furniture stacked up in the middle of your kitchen, that's not a ghost. That's a big problem you got there. Um, and, and we can talk about shadow spirits another time because it's a whole other topic. Um, but I hope that answered your question. It's it's a, not an easy answer. Discerning is how how you do it. So I hope that helps. I would love to keep. Thank you for asking all the questions. I love them. And keep talking. To, let's keep the conversation going in the Facebook um, page. Um, and if you have any more questions, if you have experiences you want to share, if you have your own tips that you know, um, share them there. And like I said, this is like the the bite sized version. If you want to go deep into it. Um, I'd love to see you in my psychic development class. That's where we get into the full, full on how you actually do it, um, you know, in depth in it with all the things that we're talking about. So you guys have a great weekend. Um, and yeah, I'll see you around. Thanks. Bye.